What is up, YouTube? It is Joker777, and of course, this is going to be a spoiler-filled, actually, discussion. This is not a review, but more something I was kind of wanting to discuss, and it involves The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, I do have a spoiler review, a spoiler-free review up on my channel if you would like to uh, check that out. Um, again, no spoilers in there. It's just my review of the movie. But this is going to be a spoiler-filled discussion because of something that happens. Now, in my review, I talked about this big idea of fan service. And, of course, the fan service I was talking about was, of course, in the ending scene, was the death of Gwen Stacy. And, for me, this is what I was waiting for. Because when they told when they announced that The Amazing Spider-Man 1 is actually going to have Gwen Stacy in it, the first thing I thought was, are they going to do the death of Gwen Stacy uh, storyline, and when I heard they were doing the Green Goblin in this one, I pretty much knew for a fact that it was going to happen. Now, for those of you that don't read Spider-Man comics and just follow the movies, I heard so many people say, you know, but Mary Jane is his one true love. Actually, that is false. In the comic books, actually, Gwen Stacy is actually Peter Parker's first real love. And, a little side note here, Peter Parker would never have met Mary Jane Watson if not for Gwen Stacy, because if I remember correctly, her... Uh, Mary Jane and Gwen were actually friends. They were actually somewhat rivals, too, but they were very good friends, and that's how Peter ends up meeting Mary Jane. And it's because of the death of Gwen Stacy, Peter becomes so close to Mary Jane, and he that's how they end up falling in love. So, just to give you guys an idea of how big this event is, the story of Gwen Stacy actually came out in, I believe, the early 70s. I believe it was 1973. And it's in the issue The Amazing Spider-Man number 121. And... This e this event was so big. This was the first time that a main character had actually been killed off, and it was and it was actually the first time that a superhero had actually failed to save someone. Matter of fact, there has been this big debate upon whether you know she hit you know the water because he the Green Goblin she throws her off the uh, I think it's the George Washington Bridge in the comics. I think Spider Man tries to catch her. His web does catch her, and there's been a lot of debate as to whether. You know, his web actually caught her and it, you know, jerked her too hard and it snapped her neck. There's been a lot of debate about that, but this was the first time that a superhero had actually failed at that. Matter of fact, this event was so big, it actually ended what most people today call the Silver Age of Comics. This was the event. And when I was a kid, you know, in the early 90s reading comic books, you know, Spider Man was easily one of my favorite, you know, and I remember, I think it was my cousin. Or it was some. It was some of my family. Like their dad. So one of my uncles had all these, you know, Spider-Man books from when he was growing up. And one of the storylines that I'd read was the death of Gwen Stacy. And I remember when I read that panel where they said that she had died, I was shocked, and I was just blown away that this had happened because you know here in the 1970s, this was unheard of. It was unheard of for. Um, you know, a main character to actually fail, and I believe this is actually what set up, you know, parallels for, you know, the death of Superman in the Nightfall series. Granted, those series of comics didn't come out until about 20 years later. Actually, when I was younger, I remember reading the death of Superman in 19, when I was like five or six years old. So, again, that was such a huge fan service that they did, because they could have edited, they could have edited this way so many ways. They could have just showed, you know, Spider-Man saving her, and then maybe they break up and she just disappears. They could have shown, you know, the the Green Goblin like stabbing her or something like that. But no, they chose to do it the correct way, and they did it so well, and it was so well done. And like those scenes where you see Peter coming back to her grave, obviously they can't show, you know, him going through the entire process of grieving for her because that would take way too damn long because he grieved for her for a while. But just, an, just such a great fan service, and it just blew me away how they kept it so close to the original storyline, and I was just so beyond elated that they did that, because this was an earth-shattering event that most people who don't read comics probably don't realize. This was earth-shattering. The fact that a superhero basically had failed, and that some someone he had cared about in his love interest had actually died, and it could have quite have possibly have, have been his fault. Now, I say all that just because, you know... There, there may have been, you know, the, this may not exactly have been the first time. That's just what I've been told. That's just what I've been told. Wow, that was a very southern draw there. Um, but this is the first. I think it was the first mainstream, you know, story, you know, comic book character that actually had failed. There are, you know, smaller comic book series out there, and I know there's 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 dozens upon dozens upon thousands of story arcs that I myself have not read, but. I remember reading this when I was young, and it just shocked me to death. And then, you know, afterwards, you know, 
Mary Jane's basically there to pick up the pieces, and that's when she becomes his real love interest. But yeah, man, the, the, that just it blew me away whenever I read that, and I was so pleased to see that they actually kept it the way they did in the film. I thought that was a great fan service, and that's one of the reasons why I love the film so much. And of course, the other thing I want to talk about is, of course, Sinister Six, just because we all know that, um, or at least our fans of comic books know that this is probably going to be the next um, Amazing Spider-Man movie. So I've heard somewhere, supposedly, that they're actually going to give the Sinister Six their own spinoff, which would be kind of cool. Now, the Sinister Six, for those of you who don't know, is basically just a collaboration of some of the most well, or not, not really most well-known, just because I don't think Venom ever gets into the Sinister Six. But there are some well-noted group of um, villains that are actually in this. The one thing that I have a problem with, you've seen some of them. Like, you saw the uh, the uh, the tentacles for Doc Ock in there. You saw the wings for Vulture. Um, the original Sinister Six, if I remember correctly, actually had Doc, uh, Doc Ock, Electro, Craven the Hunter, uh, Mysterio, who is probably one of my favorite Bi Spider-Man villains of all time. And I'm so waiting for them to give me a movie with Mysterio. Uh, Sandman and Vulture. And, like I said, we saw the wings for the Vulture. We saw uh, the tentacles for Doc Ock. And so, we didn't see anything about... We, of course, we have Electro from the movie, um, which, is, which is weird because he exploded. So, how they're going to bring him back, I don't know. Um, and apparently, Green Goblin will be in it, too. And I think Green, and I think Green Goblin has been in one of them. I know he's not in the original, though. I know that much. Um... Like I said, I'm just really waiting to see if they're actually going to give Mysterio a chance. It'll be awesome to see Craven the Hunter, too, just because he's very out there, Craven the Hunter is. Um, how they're going to bring Electro back, I don't know. And then Vulture, I mean, Vulture's a pretty cool guy, you know, for me. He wasn't, like, one of the top, you know, Spider-Man villains. He wasn't, you know, the one, oh, Vulture's in this issue. Oh, I have to pick this one up. So, that's just, you know, a little discussion that I wanted to have just because I felt like... You know, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was such a great fan service for people who've read the comic books. I thought they did, you know, the death of Gwen Stacy just perfectly, you know, keeping it the way it was meant to be. And I really, really, really enjoyed this film. And I think it's actually one of the better Spider-Man films out there. I know that some people are actually going to disagree with me on that, and that is completely 100% fine. I understand that everyone has their own preferences. I understand that some people like the, uh, the Sam Raimi ones more. I know that some people love the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man more. For me personally, though, I'm loving the uh, the Mark Webb the Mark Webb series of Spider-Man films, and I'm loving Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. So, in the comments section down below, you know, have you guys actually read the Death of Gwen Stacy comic book series? If you have, let me know what you thought. Were you as big? Were you as shocked as I am when you first read that um, comic? Because I knew I was shocked. I actually had to put the comic down after I read that panel. <laughs> so. Yeah, just let me, just let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions on how you felt they handled the Death of Gwen Stacy storyline. And are you excited for a possible Sinister Six spinoff movie? I know I would definitely be. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for viewing. Be sure to like and especially comment and subscribe. And, of course, there's more, more content coming along the way. I'm Joker777, and I will talk to you guys later.